Hi everyone, it's Nancy Vasting, and I've come with a project that I want to do, and um, if you all remember one of my videos back when I'd lost my tags and I thought I'd send them all to Secret, and I had was looking around and I found, I showed these on the other video, these journals that I had made and put uh, my jelly prints and these when I very first started doing jelly prints and I also put in uh, pages where I had tested my ink sprays that I were make, was making were making oh that didn't sound good was making the, um, I made a whole bunch of alcohol sprays and so I was testing them and so I put all these pages I bound them all with my um, I don't have a bind at all I have the different one oh I don't remember what it's called I'll remember it in a minute and some of these I've already started putting paints on but what I wanted to do in this journal was these backgrounds are already started and so I want to do this year a collage journal. I'm sure that you have all have seen Packer Die in how she does her her uh, collage journal. And so that's what I want to do with start doing with this. But what I want to do today is do the front and the back covers. And I've already gone ahead and jeffed this, and uh, I have my paint out here on my palette, and we're going to do some painting. But I, first of all, I want to get some texture down on this. I, I jeffed it, but I still want some texture. And so I want to put down some pieces of uh, tissue paper, but I don't want them... I want the white tissue paper because I'm going to put paint down and I don't, I I found this cut out yesterday that in a box of things that I had been cutting out of magazines and she's going to go on the front. Isn't that gorgeous? But she has all these colors on her with the butterflies and things and I didn't want to take that away from her. I want her to be the focal point. So we're going to just do... Um, the background with the same kind of colors that are in her but I'm going to do um, like the grunge the graffiti how I did the graffiti paper so let's get started here we're going to start Mod Podging some papers down and just have a good old time getting this I think it'll be fun I, I really wanted to do that this year and I had started one last year and I only did a couple pages in it but I thought because this already had the backgrounds halfway started for me that it would be much easier to get these done it would be you know I don't know, a little funner maybe to get in the journal and do them. Um, I might have to trim that off of the... I'll just fold it over. That's what I'll do. I'll fold it over. But yeah. Uh, I hope you all had a nice holiday. I'll tell you... Um, we bought a rib roast. I don't know. I can't remember how many pounds it was. Um, from this new store that has opened, this new grocery store that had opened up. And my sister-in-law cooked it the way uh, she found a recipe of Paula Deen where Paula Deen, you put it in the oven in a roasting pan without a lid on it 
and you put it in for at 375 for 70 minutes. And then you turn the oven off and let it coast in the oven with the oven turned off for three hours. Nobody better open up your oven. <laughs> You'll be down their throat. And so we did that and and then at the very end after that you turn it back on at 375 for another 40 minutes or something. I don't know. 30, 40 minutes. Oh my goodness. That roast. That it was a rib roast. Came out so delicious and it was cooked where there was some not so much really rare it was kind of medium rare meat on the inside and then towards the outside it got dunner and if if people really wanted their meat well done you around the edges was well done but it was so tender it just melted in your mouth it was just oh so that's a good way to cook a roast with way Pauli Dean. So anyway, um, then the next day, that was Christmas Day we had that. And then the next day, the day after Friday, we uh, warmed it up to room temperature, let it sit out to room temperature. And then we sliced some more meat off of it. for, And then we made some hot baguettes, bread, and had sandwiches with it. And, and then we didn't have, we got kind of, you know, you get kind of tired of it. But yesterday, mom, uh, my mother-in-law, who is 88 years old, and she, her birthday is in March 17th, she'll be 89 years old. And she, um, I guess, boiled the meat yesterday, the bones. There was like three rib bones on it. And she boiled those and made a broth. And, oh, it smelled so good. But we didn't eat that last night. And today she's making the soup with it. Oh. So we really got a lot of meals out of that one roast. Uh, it was like, I don't know, I think it was eight pounds maybe, eight, eight pound roast. Of course, there's only four of us to eat, so it went a long ways. And I think it cost her like only 40 bucks, but yeah, that was a nice, for that many meals, to get out of that that was really good all right guys i think i've got enough paper on the front and this is probably gonna be a long video because i don't know how to edit and i don't know how to go fast forward and i don't know how to mute out the sound of the heat guns so i'm gonna have to use it to dry this up a little bit so put your ears away from the speakers and I'm going to go ahead and start running the heat gun. So yeah, that was a story about our, our food and that was a really good way to cook it. But I have always done uh, <clears throat> chickens when I boiled chickens for soup. When I was working, I would get them out and put them on the stove and bring them to a roaring boil, just a hard boil, and then I would put a lid on them and turn it off and of course go to work all day and come home and my chickens were, were done and they were so tender and so juicy it would fall right off it so they were basically steamed all day long in that hot water. And uh, a bubble there. I need to get some more glue on that. Hang on, hang on. 
Yeah, so that's how I, and when I came here, I told my mother-in-law that's how I cooked my chickens. And she was a little bit leery about that. And I showed her how it works. She was really leery that those chickens weren't going to get cooked enough for, you know, that you don't get poisoned. But I'm still around. I guess that's just going to have to have a bubble in it. That story. Belle has succeeded to uh, tear her new frog toy in part in pieces and get out the squeaky toy. She found out what they are and then she's chewed them up and luckily she spit them out. That was nice of her. I didn't glue that to the inside paper because I didn't put anything. No, it's okay. Okay, that's dry. And I am going to put a piece of paper under there because I don't want it to paint on these other papers. But first of all, I want to do some stenciling, and I'm going to do this with Josie's stencil she sent me. We have a flower, well, it's a weed is what they call it, but actually it's called Queen's Anne's Lace, and I don't know if any of you have heard of that, but it's a flower that, let's see, what do I want to do this with? I think not what I have at, on my palette. I think I want a different color for this. Hang on, guys. Let me see here. I know which one I want. I want this one. No, that's portrait pink. That's not the one I want. Oh, gosh, guys. I have a really nice pale orangey. Here it is. It's called Naples Rude. It's a Naples yellow red. And I really like this color. But anyway, we have what's called Queen's Anne's Lace. And what it is, what I've heard it is, is it blossoms in the spring, this beautiful blossom, almost like shape of this stencil with all white little flowers on it. And uh, I uh, picked one day, picked one, pull, well, I, you can't pick them. You basically have to pull them out of the ground and brought it home for to see if Linda knew what the, my sister-in-law Linda knew what the, um, name of it was and she automatically knew it was Queen's Anne Lace and what it is is the I guess the Germans brought it from Germany and it's a wild carrot and the uh, root of it tastes like a carrot you can eat it and they're just gorgeous and um, I saw on a video, a YouTube video, and you know, I never get the name or anything down of a lady that had a stamp of one that she called Queen's and Lace. And I was like all over that. So I was looking online the other day for more of the inchy stamps for um Josie, she asked me in one of the comments what, if I knew the name, and they're from Inka Dinka Do. So I was online looking for that, and I just happened to put in Queen's End Lace, and it popped up. Uh-huh, yeah. The stamp popped up. 
And that's where it's going to be. It's going to come here to this house. Not right away, but one of these days. I love this stencil. I love it. Basically, I think because it looks like Queen's Anne Lace. Oh, look how gorgeous that is. Let's set that over there. Oh, look how pretty. I'm going to dry that a little bit. Now, if my heat gun will turn back on. Sometimes after I run it for a while, it doesn't want to work. Oh, it's going to work for me today. I'm going to get a new one, but I'm going to get a... I've ordered it from uh, my friend Pam at Stamping Buddies. She can get it for me for like... 35% off or something like that. But I'm ordering a, a Milwaukee, I think it's a Milwaukee 1400 uh, heat, industrial heat tool. And it's going to be loud, and I don't know how to mute. I'm going to have to figure out how to mute on my camera. I'm sure I have a mute button there somewhere. I've got all kinds of buttons on there. I just haven't pushed them. For fear, I don't know what I'm going to get. Alright, guys. Let's try. Alright, now we're going to go around with the other colors. And I'm going to use my catalyst. My wonderful little catalyst. And just get some paint down on here. I broke my little plate. I had a little plate that I used for putting paint out on. It was a base to put to hold candles on, and yeah, I broke it. So we're just going to slap some of this paint down. You yeah, know, we're going to slap it down. Where it goes, nobody knows. But we're going to put it everywhere. And I'm not rinsing off my catalyst. I'm just going with it. Spreading it around. Getting in some of these bumps. Of this tissue paper we put down on here. All these colors are on that um, lady that I'm going to put on the front. Um, so I, I picked out these colors for that purpose. But I don't want to uh, drown her out. I want her to be the focal point, but I do want some of these around her. not going to put too much paint on because I, you know, it's, it's going on pretty thin. So it's not going to be, have much drying time. I need to get a little bit of this dark red. Actually, it's magenta. Magenta. So, I don't have any other stories to tell you. Okay, let's see. Did we use them all? A little bit of yellow, yes. Light blue. I think we got some of that on here. Yeah. I'll put a little more of this on here. I think we about graffitied it up enough. What do you guys think? Maybe a little more? Because after I get her on here, I'm going to be doodling around her and putting a border around the edge of the 
around the edge here and seeing where we're going to go from there because I do have some other sticker butterflies. I have some ephemera from Bow Bunny noteworthy stuff that's got butterflies in that, but I'm saving those probably for the back page. I just want to see what it's going to look like here if I need to. Yep. What I'm going to do now is I bought this cool little, um, what is this called? This little roller thing. <laughs> What's that called, guys? What is it called? I can't think. Anyway, I think it needs some white. Tone it down a little bit. And then we might uh, do a little bit of maybe some stenciling. Are you guys yelling at me? Do you know what this is called? Come on, Nancy. Get your brain going. What's it called? Oh. Why does this always happen when I get on YouTube? I can't think. Um, anyway. I picked it up at Tuesday morning. And has these balls. And it has another one that goes on it. That is stripes and they're interchangeable so I think this needs to be toned down a little bit it's a little bit taken away from her so I'm gonna roll some white in here The best way to put dots on your page. White dots. Hot mess, huh? Hot mess, guys. We're at the hot mess stage. Okay, let's dry that up and see what we have here. Huh? See, my dryer's not going to work. So it happens every time. So then I have to get out my hair dryer, my old nifty, drifty hair dryer, blow dryer that I used when I was doing hair. And this is loud. So, here we go. Somehow, because Belle hears this um, blow dryer or the heat gun, she comes running. And then I point it at her and she goes running away. Um, she knows what this is because she goes to the groomers. So, what can I say? We kind of got it toned down now. I think I'm going to put some marks, some, uh, maybe some black paint, maybe two. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it needs. Probably just needed Nancy to leave it alone. Okay. It does draw it fast. That's for sure. Are we in frame here, guys? I don't never know if I'm in frame or out of frame, and don't know what to do. 
What should I do, guys? What should I do? Okay. That toned it down quite a bit. I do want her to be the focal point. This is what this journal is all about. Isn't that just the coolest picture you ever saw? All those butterflies? And I wanted to pick up all these, which I did really well. But I think now, and I didn't get out any of my marking tools, but I think I need maybe just a few little marks of black in here, some black ink. So hang on a minute. I'm just going to go right over here and get my bucket of marking tools. Be right back. bucket of marking tools. <laughs> That's my bucket of marking tools. And, and some stamps. But I think what I'm going to use is my my all time go to which is my lines and this grungy looking thing. This one and my, yeah, that one. And for now, I think that's all I'm going to put on there. And Belle, stay out of this. Yeah, right, huh? Put it down on the floor. She thinks that's her toy. And we're going to use some black ink. And we're going to go for it. So here we go. Okay, a little bit of this. Maybe that's enough. I don't want to overpower it. Let's dry that up and see what that does. See, it turns back on again. I don't know. I, I just think it's going out. It's going to just poop out on me one day, good old day, and that'll be the end of it. It'll be the end of it. And I have, I, I'm thinking of a lot of this other stuff, butterflies and stuff are going to go on the back. I'll show you what I have cut out for the back, which is... This butterfly is on these flowers. I want to put that on the back page. See that? I'm in a butterfly mood. Okay, hopefully these are... That ink takes a long time to dry, see? And I do not want to smear it. That's one thing I just do not want to do with the glue. put some circles on. Use some of this paint and put some circles on. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm just experimenting, guys. If it comes out pretty, it comes out pretty. If it comes out ugly, then it was a good experiment, and I'll just leave it ugly. 
Leave it a hot mess.